Hello and welcome to The World Is Our Cloister, the monthly podcast of the Irish Dominican Friars, where we let you glimpse some of our life here in the cloister as friars and also take a look at the world through a Dominican lens. So we're launching this podcast because we find that often enough our life here seems to many people like a bit of a mystery. And in actual fact, in reality, uh, the religious life is very, very beautiful. Uh, in the Catholic world as well, we also, I suppose, as Dominicans, bring a unique way of looking at things. We've been formed in a tradition which is 800 years old and is unique because there was a charism given to our founder, St. Dominic, which uh, was given to nobody else. So to that end, let's dive into it. So my name is Brother Chris Galt. I am the host of the podcast and I am gratefully joined today by Brother Charles Hurley. Good morning. And Father Connor McDonough. How are you? So let us dive right in. Uh, brothers, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast and thank you as well for listening. So who are we, I suppose, is the best way to start off as Dominicans? Are we just random priests and seminarians who walk around dressed in white or do we have some sort of special charism to offer to people in the world and specifically in the Catholic world? Yeah, I, I, no, I think that's actually a great new um, definition of what we are, and we should put that on our posters, random priests and seminarians who we dress around in white. I think that's spot on. But actually, no, I, I mean, it's, it, it's just occurring to me that, you know, an awful lot of people, one of the most common questions I'm asked by people in Ireland is, why are the Dominicans getting so many vocations? Mm. Um, and your, your way of setting up this podcast and what it's about, it'll really help people understand why the Dominicans are getting vocations, what God is doing at the moment in and through the Dominican order in Ireland and what please God uh, he will do through our preaching um, in the future. Um, and I think your your focus on St. Dominic is really spot on. You know, I'm more and more convinced, you know, Thomas Aquinas is the Dominican who's best known mm-hmm. maybe worldwide. And in Ireland, everybody knows St. Martin de Porres and there are two great Dominican saints to know. Um, but the more I, 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 I study St. Dominic, the more I realize, yet yeah, the whole Dominican thing is here in the life and work of St. Dominic. Um, so I think really he's the, he's the core of what we're about. Um, and essentially, not to go into the whole story, but essentially his, his conviction um, is that preaching the word of God is essential in the life of the church. Mm-hmm. Preaching the word of God as universally as possible, not just to a small group of people, but to a, you know, as many people as possible, all kinds of different groups of people, and to do so out of a brotherhood. And that was one of the most important insights that he had out of a brotherhood that was studying and praying together and then the word of God just pouring out in all directions from that community. So that's that's our vision. Yeah. And I suppose, Father, you you mentioned there something about brotherhood and we call ourselves friars, Mm -hmm. uh, which is from the French for French word frère, uh, which means brother. Absolutely. Um, But we have like all these different aspects to our identity. So. Uh, the, the example I always give is that on a Tuesday morning, Tuesday is the day that we traditionally devote to St. Dominic in a special mm-hmm. way. So I go to his statue after Mass on a Tuesday and I usually, well, pray at the mm-hmm. statue. It's good. Usually a good thing to do at statues <laughs> yeah. is to, to pray rather than yeah. just gaze at them. Uh, so w- one of the things I find myself doing is I pray, St. Dominic, make me the friar that God wants me to be. Mm-hmm. But oh, wait, also make me the religious that God wants me to be. And oh, uh, also make me in the future the priest, the God, and, and, and the saint, mm-hmm. and the like. We have all these different, you yeah. know, aspects to our identity, which uh, we're like onions, uh, basically. Yeah, we smell really bad here. Yeah, yeah we make people and we cry. taste awful. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, great, uh, great in a stew, though. We're great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great in a stew. We are yeah. great in stew, indispensable yeah. in stew. Yeah, uh, I think the the the. the the cloister can be a bit of a, a, a stew of different personalities and stuff. A lot definitely of the time. a melting pot, anyway. <laughs> definitely a melting pot. But but, but I, I think that's a really good point, though, about um, yeah. about Saint Dominic. Is he's kind of he's not he's almost he's not even the biggest personality within the order. But he's he's something that kind of unites us. Obviously, the founder and um, the, char- kind of the charism of order kind of flows from him in a sense. Mm. Um, but that's very true in a sense because Tuesday after night prayer, Compline. Um, we pray the um, Ospem Miram to uh, to Saint Dominic, um, asking him to pray for us, and it's yeah, no, d- definitely his um, his kind of example is is always there of, uh, of 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 the fire that I want to be that all of us uh, kind of aspire to be um, yeah. like him. So it's very much in yeah. his example that we want to mm. you know because I think the, the wonderful thing about the Dominican order 
which I have always loved is the diversity mm. that it allows for. You know, we're not all we're not models of some figure in the past. We're not like clones, or we're mm. not yeah put in, into some kind of cast and then and then produced. That's that's the purpose of the formation. No, it's that Saint Dominic. I think realized that uh, it'll take all sorts. You know, yeah. so mm. we have you mentioned Saint Thomas Aquinas and Saint Martin de Porres. They are great examples, actually, because one of them was <coughs> probably, yeah. arguably, the greatest theologian Definitely. the church has ever <laughs> produced. <laughs> Hope there are no uh, <laughs> Franciscans <laughs> listening. Uh, but, uh, you know, the other one, St. Martin de Porres, probably couldn't read. Yeah. You know, mm. um, being as he was a familiaris and a, uh, like from a very, very poor background in 16th century Peru. Um, so uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a great spectrum there. But Huge both are, are Dominican mm. saints, you know, in their own right. Exactly. I mean, I often, when people are discerning a Dominican vocation, I often tell them just get to know the saints of the order, and not just some saints, but mm. all the saints. You told me that actually. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really an important point that um, the Dominican thing is not just about about just study or being intellectual or whatever it might be. That there's a huge variety of ways of being a, um, a Dominican, and as you say, the different layers of of our identities. Another common question I'm asked is, are you a brother or a priest? Mm. Um, <laughs> and I love to say, well, both. I mean, they're not yeah. mutually yeah, exclusive. Yeah. I'm a brother and a priest. That's what it means to be a Dominican friar who's ordained as a priest as well. Um, and it's actually, a, a, they work beautifully together, brotherhood and fatherhood. They really work mm. beautifully oh, yeah. together in our life. And I'm sure we could talk about that um, that in the future as well. So, it, yeah, it, that, that's a wonderful tradition and a custom, I suppose, that we have as well, that we refer to each other as brother, mm. even the priests of the order. Because yeah. I think people... Uh, can sometimes get like understandably a bit maybe like like oh did I misaddress you you yeah. know and mm-hmm. sure. oh sorry are you oh you're not oh yeah. like it doesn't matter so much for Dominicans because mm. we are all like, even in the master of the order will be referred to as brother absolutely like when we make profession yeah. for instance yeah. I make my hands I make I make hands <laughs> I make <laughs> I make hands into the profession. Of <laughs> That's probably what we all make mistakes when we're making our profession. We've all made mistakes. <laughs> I make profession into your hands, brother, and I'm really paraphrasing the formula of yeah. uh, which I haven't learned of of profession, um, brother X, yeah. the provincial uh, who is in place of brother Y, the master of the order. Mm. So it's all, it's all, yeah. There's, I mean, brotherhood really is is quite central to it, but. Yeah. I suppose, why do you think that is important in Ireland today, specifically? I'm, I might just come in, because the, the, there's a point about St. Dominic that I, I just wanted to make, because, mm. um, you know, in relation to brotherhood, in relation to the confidence that he had in the brothers, mm. um, and, and this there's a genuine kind of, uh, sometimes people expect a really intense hierarchy when they come into a, a Dominican house, and you find it's not, I mean, there's certain ways in which a hierarchy will, will, will come into, into play, um, but in general, there's, there's a real sense of, of equality, and if you look at um, uh, St. Dominic's own life, how he um, sent out novices to preach. Mm. Uh, and this is something that he was criticized for at the time. Um, and he was criticized by, by Cistercian monks in particular. There's one story about him being criticized by Cistercian monks for sending novices out to preach. And he quite cheekily said to them, well, I send my novices out to preach and they do a good job and they come back. You keep your novices locked up, but they still escape at night. Um, so that was a little, little bit cheeky. Um, but the, the point is that he had great confidence in them, and there are beautiful stories told by early friars who maybe had a moment of crisis or crisis of confidence in their, in their youth, in their early days in the order, mm. and they talk about St. Dominic just bringing them aside and having a little chat with them mm. and saying, in, in one case, um, God will be with your mouth. It's just an, an extraordinary yeah. phrase. Mm. I think it turns up in the story of Moses as well, but that idea that God will be with your mouth uh, and God will give you the words you need. I mean, there's a beautiful confidence there in the work of God in everybody's life. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's really, really important. It's yeah. it's very reassuring, I think, as, as, some, as someone in formation myself, you know, as a kind of... Uh, <laughs> um, that, 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 who hasn't really... Is, isn't as practiced as preaching, uh, at, at preaching myself. So it's kind of... Uh, there's, there's, yeah, the, the a confidence and, 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 and trust in, in, in God uh, to be with um, to be with me in that and, and the um, and again I guess the Saint Dominic's example. So yeah. Mm. And Charles, you mentioned that you are in formation, as yes. am I. Uh, I suppose Father Connor would say your formation is ongoing as well. Ongoing uh, for sure. That, that's the case for all of us. But you but want some more information about that? Oh, <laughs> this is why Charles we have Brother Charles puns. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast puns. <laughs> um, but we we are a clerical order. Father Connor, you mentioned about there not being a, a very yeah. kind of, at least not a very obvious hierarchy uh, when you enter a Dominican convent. Um, we do have priors, we have superiors, 
they're elected for a term mm. and the thing is they they have to be priests right mm -hmm. so there are brothers in the dominican order mm -hmm. but when saint dominic founded the order i think he wanted it specifically to be a clerical order uh you know an order of priests which includes brothers mm -hmm. at the same time but why would there why would he want uh, i suppose a, an order of priests especially mm. what can what can priests i suppose bring which you know the brothers maybe maybe can't so much. Well, I mean, one one thought that comes to mind for me, um, you know, very important in the preaching mission of the order is the sacrament of confession. Mm -hmm. So one of um, Dominic's successors, Humbert of Roman, says that the preacher who um, who goes out and preaches but refuses to hear confessions is like a farmer who goes and sows seed but then doesn't take in the harvest. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it's perhaps that. Um, the, the, the really vital link between preaching the gospel and hearing confessions that uh, if, if these, you know, reconciling sinners after, after having preached conversion, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's possibly one reason why priesthood is really important in the, the Dominican order. It's curious, you know, people sometimes ask as well, how are we different from diocesan priests? Yeah. Um, and one way in which we're different from diocesan priests is I think that we hear a lot more confessions. Mm -hmm. It's not that we say more masses, um, and we certainly celebrate other sacraments a lot less mm -hmm. than um, than diocesan priests. You know, the anointing of the sick, or even weddings, and then you know, celebrating funerals is something we don't do necessarily all that often. But confessions, we hear an yeah. awful lot of confessions, um, and it's a really important part of of our ministry. And it's not incidental to our work as preachers. It's mm -hmm. really closely related. And in some ways, you could even say that that it's the the best place for preaching to happen is in the yeah. context of the sacrament of confession. Humbert says, Humbert of Romans again. I'm quoting. Mm -hmm. the idea of an army so when you're preaching uh, to a huge congregation of people it's like sending up a whole load of arrows that might hit different people but they might not but when you're in confession it's like sending an arrow I mean it's a pretty brutal image <laughs> oh but a, a kind of point blank <laughs> point <laughs> blank <laughs> arrow kind of shot yeah, right at the heart no missing there. yeah exa in other words that you're speaking words that directly relate to this person's situation and you're sharing the word of God directly with this person as they are mm. um, and it can be a transformative experience yeah. so for me that's one of the reasons why there's a connection between priesthood and preaching mm. I, I would say as well um, it's quite a privileged place for preaching um, in, in in the mass um, as yeah. well I suppose um, links to, linked to our hearing and like receiving of the word of God um, and I suppose as as brothers and uh, and, and as priests as well um our, our life of prayer and uh, a, a contemplation, Lexia Divina, uh, coming from the monastic mm. tradition, is very important for ourselves as well. Of um, because it's, it's not just that we are preachers, but we, we preach the word of God. That is what we um, what we preach, and um, I suppose, yeah, the mass mm. being the um, where 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 we hear the word of God, where we receive the word of God uh, in the Eucharist, and then um, I suppose preaching into that as well. So, yeah, yeah I, think it, I was just going to add to that mm. that that you know. Um, when we celebrate mass, we nearly always preach at mass, uh, mm -hmm. even on even at a weekday mass. And yeah, this yeah. is something that kind of surprises people if they if they kind of rock up to a <laughs> seven twenty five a.m. mass in Saint Saviour's <laughs> and after the gospel, like, the work there. <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, they're 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 ready to have. Now we don't preach for long necessarily, but it's. I mean, I've almost I could probably count on on two hands the amount of masses I've celebrated with the congregation where I haven't preached. Maybe yeah. even on one hand. I mean, even it's just like offering a few words. Uh, even a few words. Yeah. 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 Um, even when I celebrate mass, you know, sometimes with with our older men in the in in the oratory, it's very difficult for me not to <laughs> not to share a few words, even just to three old men who who could preach far better than I could. You know, there's something yeah. instinctive for us in the context of the Eucharist that we want to we want to share the word of God. We want to mm. to kind of crack it open there for people. Um, so yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. The connection between the Eucharist and preaching is hugely important for us too. You're both kind you're both touching on something I, I think is quite important in the life of the order, which is actually. I'm coming in to talk about our actual mission but we were very renowned for like actually giving missions not so much for like running parishes which the diocesan priests do uh, and do very well but we're maybe more renowned for like being parachuted in and preaching a mission and one of the most important things i heard about dominicans when i was thinking about the order thinking about coming in was that the dominican is most at home in two places the pulpit and the confessional mm. as you mentioned father connor and traditionally, I think on Dominican missions, when Dominicans, they, they would come in, we hunt in packs. Mm -hmm. So we would come in threes or fours. There would be a Dominican preaching in the pulpit. There might be a, another Dominican praying mm -hmm. as, the, as that other brother is preaching. But there's always, always a Dominican in the box, mm -hmm. we say, uh, which, you know, speaks to your point there, Father Connor, of, uh, you know, sowing the seed 
and also reaping the harvest at the same time. And I think there's something specific as well about Dominican confessions, because I mentioned at the start, like we have this great tradition uh, and it is informed by our theology, but at the same time, it's also informed by our experience in community. Mm. When you said there about, you know, with, with the older men in the oratory and their mass mm. on a Sunday, I, I think those older men can preach very well from their, their study of theology for years and decades, but also for their, like, their lived experience in community life. Mm. Yeah. Because we, we are kind of thrown together. We don't choose to live with each other. We're not really bound by bonds of natural affection the same way a family would be but there's something very supernatural i I find about living in in community that uh you you don't really get i suppose elsewhere that that's maybe something unique that that we can bring as religious you know which is another aspect of of who we are as dominicans saint dominic make me a good religious yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah and i think that 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 idea of of not being solo apostles but always i mean saint dominic you know used to send out the the brothers two by two um, and as you mentioned, kind of hunting in packs when you go on a, on a parish mission, for example. Some of my most beautiful moments as a Dominican have been on parish missions like that with yeah. maybe mm. three or four brothers. And, and it can be exhausting. You know, you work really, really hard, um, but, it's, but you're doing really important work together and, and you're praying together. And, and it's a really powerful thing. But even just thinking about my own, my own growth in faith as a, as a teenager and in my early 20s, I realize now that it was partly thanks to this kind of shared Dominican mission because I would go to Youth 2000 retreats mm. and I would hear um, maybe one of the friars um, preaching and I would find something really substantial there and I would say, okay, these guys really have something to say, you know, that they're kind of drawing from some sort of deep resources, not just, you know, um, something shallow they're preaching or, or, or uh, is coming from, from study. Yeah. Um, and then I would go to confession and I can remember particular Dominicans that I would go to confession to and... Um, and it was, as you say, there was something different about the way they heard confession. Uh, it, it wasn't, it certainly wasn't um, in any way kind of harsh or judgmental. Yeah. Neither was it kind of dismissing the seriousness of sin and saying, well, this is unimportant. Yeah. But I remember one, one friar in particular just teaching me about growth and virtue. Um, That's it. And, and, about, mm-hmm. and, about, and, and the work of grace in my life as well. Um, just to, to see these things, as to, to, to see life not just as a series of kind of, you know, mistakes and then you kind of you know get a clean sheet again or whatever you know mm. and, uh, and and you start again but actually that you're growing you're being transformed all the time this kind of dynamic understanding of human life which is so important to dominican spirituality and theology this is what i experienced in in in, in those confessions and then of course at the same retreats then you might go into the canteen or wherever and and you're there with three or four friars and they're laughing and joking and um, there's just you can see real fraternity even as you say mm. even if they're not necessarily people who would normally hang around together you see something supernatural that is kind of bringing these people together and um, into in, into something that's quite beautiful that it's full of flaws and full of <laughs> yeah. we, we know about that too and mm. um, but there's nevertheless something really beautiful that, that brings us to live together I, I think you're touching as well on something that really and again i'm making this very personal but when i was coming into the order what i was v- very much struck by was the humanity of the brothers mm. coming into dominican convents they're not kind of parading about like pretend the angels no yeah. you know they're all they're very human they're very aware of their flaws and i think it i think it links in quite well with what you're saying about the dominican style of conf- of confession which is i've always found very overwhelmingly positive yeah you know okay yes there is the gravity of sin and it holds us back from true freedom but you're helping people to be formed in virtue and showing them how all of the things in their life are, are adding up to their perfection you yeah. know and th- the confessional is used as a way to to help people to see how okay yeah that sin was committed let's grow from it yeah you know saint thomas teaches this that that you know repenting of of sins you can actually uh, come back to a higher state of virtue Absolutely. um so it's not to say that like we should all be sinning that it's no it's, it's a great yeah. thing to do no, no that is not the message it. of this podcast <laughs> But I'm just thinking it's of it. But it's the growth. Agreed. It's the <laughs> growth. It's the growth in virtue that is really, really important, and which I think is actually sorely lacking. Yeah, for uh, sure. In, in, a, in a, like w- when we when we meet people, I suppose in out, out in the world, uh, even even people you know people who are not Catholic, they might see the the Catholic Church, and maybe they were formed in this way, uh, kind of the way that that you mentioned that it's just almost transactional. Yeah. You know, sure. and like I did this, 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 and then I got a clean sheet again. I start from yeah. the start, and it's, a, and that's that's not what Dominicans 
are really about. No, it's not the full vision of, of the, the moral life, the spiritual life. And actually, I'm, I'm just thinking of um, a video that we have on our, on our YouTube channel, so I'll make sure you're all like, like and subscribe. <laughs> and it's Father <laughs> Liam Walsh. One, it's a beautiful thing that we, we, yeah. we ask some of our older men as part of the series called Meet the Brethren, how did you come to join the Dominican Order? And it's fascinating what you hear from them. Uh, so one of them, we asked Father Liam Walsh, how did you come to join the Dominican Order? And he went right back to his, his youth as a boy and the kind of um, missions that he would have kind of participated in as a student at school. And he's, he mentions some kinds of priests who came in from certain religious orders and all they talked about was sin. That is all they yeah. talked about. And I mean, the boys were almost like learning new sins that they'd never had even imagined. Oh. Um, and, and that was the, the kind of the focus of the whole retreat was sin, sin, sin. Um, and then they had a Dominican one year and it was totally different. And the, the, the image that he used for these boys was Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, these three young men in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. But precisely in the, the fiery furnace with the presence of God there with them and being transformed by this fire, the fire of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So this, this mm -hmm. vision of, of you know, the challenges of life as also presenting opportunities for, for growth. So for Father Liam, he said, there's something different here. There's something really healthy and beautiful and attractive yeah. and true mm -hmm. uh, about how, what this man is preaching. And that was one of the first things that, that kind of drew him to the Dominican order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I think like going back to the, the, the three or four friars at Youth 2000 retreats who are laughing and joking in the, in the canteen, I have always found Dominican friars to be very at peace with themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's actually the focus on uh, the positivity, the growth in virtue, and actually the triumph of God's grace. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, I know I'm a sinner and, and I know I'm imperfect, but I also believe that God is at work in me yeah. and he's bringing me to perfection. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. But that, that gives me a great peace, Absolutely. you know, because yeah. I don't have to have it all sorted out now. No. You know, I, and that, that allows me the freedom just to laugh and joke at Youth 2000, yes. you know, and, and just like be a human being and, and, and enjoy life. But you also mentioned, Father Connor, about, you know, men like Father Liam and so on. And they're very, very steeped in this tradition, which comes from a history. Mm -hmm. So like, where did we actually come from? You know, what is the beginning of the Dominican order? <laughs> Brother Charles, I can see you nodding vigorously. Well, Father Connor, you're the historical expert, but I'll, <laughs> I'll start it off anyway. Um, yeah, so we're founded in 1216 by St. Dominic de Guzman. Um, but that was after, I suppose, kind of a decade of him uh, working in, in, in the south of France. Um, uh, I suppose preaching to um, the Cathars, Albigensians, um, to try and bring them back to the to the Catholic faith. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, I, I suppose he, he, he saw the need for... Um, saw the need for preaching, which uh, preaching at that time was kind of a role really reserved just for the bishop. The bishops, yeah. um, so... It, it kind of became um, seen as, as that kind of need, I suppose. I, again, um, I suppose he, he drew, a, a, attracted a, a, a group of, of, of men uh, towards him, and, and this was the kind of beginnings of, of, the, um, of the Order of Preachers. I think then in 1216, he petitioned the Pope um, to, to, to found the, the Order of Preachers, because mm. a, a need, not simply for preaching, but for preachers, yeah, mm, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. to 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 kind of I suppose yeah, like who are concentrated on that um, you know growth growth in, in in virtue and moral virtue and intellectual intellectual virtue as well and um, and then I suppose sending out the brothers to two by two as you as said before to mm -hmm. um, across Europe a lot to, to the university towns like Bologna and Paris um, where I suppose they could um, have uh, an effect. Sorry, have an effect. Have an effect. Yeah, oh, be yeah. influenced and I don't know. Just yeah, more of that. Yeah, no, I think well, you, you, you touched on a really important point there about about being preachers, preachers being you know, a preacher being your your identity that you are mm. consecrated to sharing the word of God, yeah. um, and you can actually see in one of the original documents um, this beautiful correction. So originally it says yes. in one of the original documents, you know, that this would be the order of friars, um, and and the, the Latin phrase that's used there is kind of friars who happen to preach. That's sort of the the, the construction, mm. and it's crossed out, and above it is written predicatorum so mm. friars who are preachers mm. brothers who are preachers and um, and so in other words that that preaching is, is is central to 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 our identity it's it's what we're for yeah um so for example i mean uh, you know again 
Humbert, Humbert of Romans is, 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 is <laughs> my main man. man. Fifth this master of the Dominican is sponsored Order. By this podcast, Humbert absolutely. Of Humbert, Humbert is just clapping us up there in heaven. <laughs> um, he certainly subscribed. But anyway, Humbert, um, <laughs> he, um, he talks about uh, a preacher, a, a Dominican friar, who refuses to go out and preach. Mm. And, and if you're, a, if you're a, a monk who refuses to go out of your monastery, you're kind of a good monk. Right, you're kind mm. of you know yeah. if you're if provided you're praising God in the monastery and doing good things in the monastery and so on. But that idea in the in the monastic life of love of place of being just saying, well, this is where I am, stability. I'm going nowhere else. I'm not curious yeah. about the world outside and so on. That that can be a virtue in the monastic life. Whereas for a friar, you know, if you're never going out, if you're never seeking opportunities to to speak about Jesus with people, mm. Mm. then that's you're you're not fulfilling your vocation as a friar preacher. Um, so again, that idea that this is central to our identity. Everything else is there as well, um, but it's all for the purpose of, of you know, of evangelizing ultimately. And that can't come about without this vital element of what we call itinerancy, yeah. which was so central to Saint Dominic's vision yeah. that the that the friars, as you mentioned, Brother Charles, were were to, to go from city to city preaching the gospel. Yeah. Uh, but that caused a wee bit of a stir for people mm. initially because they're used to monks being in their monasteries yeah. they're used to priests being in their parishes and then all of a sudden here are these boys walking around in uh, what looked like monastic dress yeah. uh, and they're preaching and the the people didn't know what to really make of this so i mean one of the reasons why we call this podcast the world is our cloister yeah. is that the monks are as you say father connor they're very much in their cloister yeah. uh, which is a very good thing because mm. they have they have professed themselves they yeah. have made a vow of stability to mm. be in this place yeah. physically and to seek god alone that's mm-hmm. monos right monastic yeah. mm. where monk comes from so what that's one of the big differences between monks and ourselves we yeah. don't make that vow of stability yeah. uh, in actual fact we can't as you mentioned yeah. because you know <laughs> we, we have to we, we have to go from place to place otherwise how would we preach the gospel so we, we the other thing is though that we do have a cloister yeah right yeah so when we live here in uh, in saint saviors or in any dominican convent there is a cloister there is a yeah. sacred part of the mm-hmm. convent um and why i suppose do we have that i might i might just say, say one thing on this just Please. about because i was thinking about the name um oh yeah because partly because i came up with it but also <laughs> um <laughs> Well, it was Charles just claiming the credit there. We so were, humble. No, I, no, that was yeah, a humble, humble flex, yeah, right? Yeah, but <laughs> so humble. Um, but the reason I, I, I thought of it and it was like uh, the, the initially it kind of grabbed me was I was thinking of Catherine of Siena. Um, yeah. Now I'm I'm certainly not the expert in in her life. I haven't really read as much of her as I should. But um, thinking of how initially she was kind of you know mm-hmm. kept to her her yeah. own. Um, her room. Her, her room. room yeah. Yeah. And um, then after what three years or something like that, mm-hmm. Christ told her to go out. And um, this whole idea of the cell of the heart, yeah. you know, and, and like that we bring our cell with us um, out into the world. And so we, mm. th- this is kind of our, this is like our priory, you know, it's, 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 our, it's our home base is where we pray. It's, it's, it's where we um, and, and study and, and, you know, be part of the liturgy and, and worship mm. God and stuff like that. But we bring that with us to kind of stay recollected. And um, then as, as we go into the world, um, we're able to, bring that to others I guess yeah. very much so and yeah. I, I believe it's also in a certain Dominican saint what's his name Humbert of is it Humbert of Romans or? <laughs> yes we love Humbert does he, does he say something about the, this the, 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 that the world is actually our cloister yeah uh, okay. I, okay we have cloisters proper <laughs> yeah but uh, and that is as you say brother Charles that's where we um, I suppose that's where we live our religious life we are like we our lives are ruled by like a, a, mm. a kind of a regularity of prayer and observances and so on and it's it's all kind of at the it's at the service of us becoming saints, yeah, mm-hmm. and also at the service of sanctifying that world which we go out into. Yeah, I mean, so you could even think of though a, a very modern um, phrase that people use a lot in relation to work, which is burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a great risk um, if we don't have kind of protective structures around us and and a certain kind of self care. You could think, in a certain sense, you could think of um, of the the cloister and our our common life here as a proper kind of self care. Um, not in any sense selfish, um, but just making sure that our, our, our bodies and souls are, are in good working order mm-hmm. um, so that when we're going out and, and sharing the gospel, we're not, we're not doing so in a kind of mm. distorted fashion or in an unwise fashion. Um, so when we come back here into, into the Priory, um, we're, we're renewed, we're re-energized. If we've had a really tough 
day, for example, or some really tough experience. I'm just thinking yesterday, um, I um, had a funeral of a, of a you know, tiny little child um, and just to come back into the priory and to talk with the brothers about it mm, yeah. um, and then to kind of to join them in prayer and to bring all of that to prayer. Um, it's just so important for kind of dealing with all the challenges you, you have to deal with as, a, as, as yeah. a priest in Ireland today and as a preacher of the gospel. So for me, it's, it's really essential. Sometimes people say there's kind of a tension between the contemplative dimension of our life and the kind of, you know, in the life in the priory and then the kind of more missionary dimension. But for me, there's no tension. They actually yeah. really feed each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the things sometimes people will say is that, oh, we're like semi-contemplatives mm. or whatever. And that's very much tying con like the, the life of contemplation with a timetable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Such that okay, you're not fully enclosed in your cloister and locked up, and mm -hmm. so, so you're not fully contemplative. But yeah. I, I don't think those two things equate. No. I don't think mm -hmm. Saint Dominic was a half contemplative. Sure. I think he was fully contemplative, yeah. in that he was enjoying an intimate union with God, mm -hmm. and he couldn't wait to share that with others. Yeah. Really. Uh, so I, one of the best descriptions I've heard of Dominican friars, the Dominican order in general, fully contemplative, fully apostolic, yeah. mm. because as you say, Father, those things are not mutually exclusive. No. One feeds into the other. Yeah. And there's a contemplative way of being apostolic and there's an yeah. apostolic way of being contemplative. Mm -hmm. And and as you said, yeah, no, I, I think that's that's absolutely right. Yeah. In our history, we haven't always uh, been as effective, I suppose. So down through the years, we've been around for 800 plus years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I remember I was just coming into the order uh, after the big jubilee of the 800th year of the founding and everything and that was that that was absolutely wonderful mm. uh, i suppose the order has had its ups and downs uh, throughout the centuries one thing we can say is that we've never really we've never split mm -hmm. or we've never uh you know at, at some at certain points due to uh, you know various reasons and especially like uh, persecution at various times the order almost uh, went you know almost went out of existence you know um but thanks to like Again, the, the the heroic rise of various saints and, and so on. It was it was brought back, especially in Ireland. And I know Father Connor is like chomping at the bit to, to talk about medieval Ireland, yes. <laughs> but it's <laughs> <laughs> at certain times. Mm -hmm. At certain times, the persecution was so huge and so like, vociferous yeah. that uh, we were really being squeezed. But we are celebrating a big jubilee uh, next year, which yeah. is the, actually the eight hundredth anniversary of the Irish friars, through the friars arriving in Ireland. So, settle a question, where did they land first? Oh, Dublin. I'm going to joke. Dublin. <laughs> There's some debate between Dublin and Drogheda. There sure debate. was a big debate. Derry, no? <laughs> oh, and Derry, I mean, Derry, they had stories about St. Dominic sending the friars directly to Derry in response to a request from Any the O'Donnell. Any Derry I, I, heard, I heard this so claim, but I don't think it's... I don't, I don't, I don't think it's, it's not true. Um, <laughs> this so podcast does not endorse that view. No, it does not. <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, so for, for sure that they, they had massive ups and downs and the yeah. story of the friars in Ireland, I mean, maybe that's uh, a kind of a, a, a something for another podcast to go into in depth. Mm. The story of the Irish friars is just incredible. Mm. Um, and there's some really heroic figures who are not well known at all. And there's some really, you know, funny features. And as you say, that just the, the humanity that comes out. <laughs> one thing that came, comes to mind is um, uh, a prior of St. Saviour's in at some stage in the in the early 15th century, I think. He has to have an announcement read at the Market Cross um, in Dublin. That's where you read your public announcements. And it was an announcement that any Dominican friars coming from priori priories outside of Dublin and who were staying in Dublin's taverns and inns yeah. and who said, send the bill to St. Saviour's, <laughs> um, that, that, that was not to be accepted. They weren't going to, they weren't going to foot the bill. So, I mean, there's all these kind of just these human realities as well. Um, but one way that people are going to be able to tap into this history, this really inspiring history is on our website um, mm. for the 800th anniversary, we're going to have a massive resource of Dominican historical manuals and little pamphlets, things that aren't otherwise accessible, um, and they've all been scanned. They're all going to be freely available for people there um, just to dig into. Even if there's Dominicans in your local area, you might be living in, in Athenry, for example, you might be curious about the story of the friars who lived in that incredible priory that's a ruin mm. now. Um, mm. uh, so it'll be a great opportunity for people to, to kind of tap into the Irish story. Uh, so keep an eye out on, on our website, dominicans.ie. So I suppose what that ties into very much is what Dominicans can actually bring to the table because throughout our history, even though at various times we've been at ebbs as opposed to flows, when I look at that history, I very much see God's hand at work, yeah. right? And 
the grace of God sustaining the order. Now, he does that surely because he sees a purpose for the order in Ireland. Mm. And you started off, Father Connor, by saying, uh, relating basically something we, we all know, a lot of people ask us, how come the Dominicans are getting vocations? How come it seems very strong? And and this this is very good, but my answer is always that the Lord sees a purpose for it. Mm. You know, There's something Dominican that can be brought to Ireland, to the world, to the church, uh, and I want to know what that is. So tell me. Mm. Mm. Tell us your Thank story. you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it very much comes, uh, from my perspective, I think it very much comes from our history and tradition, mm. which, did I mention, is 800 years long. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it will, I think actually St. Thomas has to play a bit of a role. And sure. I couldn't let yeah. the podcast uh, go by without giving a little shout out to my boy, St. Thomas. Yeah. And he was a massive attraction for me personally coming into yeah. the order. Uh, and th- this might sound strange, but a lot of it was actually his ju- his common sense, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, uh, his moderation in a lot of things. St. Thomas hates extremes. Yeah. And he's mm-hmm. always looking for that via media, the, the mm-hmm. middle way. Mm-hmm. And I, I think people find that very appealing and refreshing. And yeah. I think because it's yeah. true. Yeah, no, I, I think I think the two words that were coming for me were like just the, 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 the truth and clarity yeah that 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 um that kind of just drew 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 me in anyway you know that it just it kind of seemed like a yeah just very straightforward and kind of refreshing mm-hmm. um uh, that that kind of i suppose way of doing theology and just way of way of thinking even uh, as it, common sense mm-hmm. yeah yeah no i think that that that's spot on that the 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 centrality of truth for us um but also the kind of the seriousness with which our tradition takes the truth that it requires study yep. um, and it requires nuance. And this is your point about yeah. Thomas being, you know, very moderate, not just out of temperament, but because he's seeking the truth yeah. and he wants to consider every possible objection to whatever truth he's going to ultimately hold. Um, and so ours is an age of extremes. Mm. And I think the Dominicans represent a, you know, a really good response to that. Um, mm. You know, we're not interested in rushing to extremes and shouting and screaming. We're hopefully interested in in nuance and and, and subtlety and uh, patient study and so on. I think that's really vital for our times. But also there's kind of a, a passion for preaching the gospel and preaching Jesus Christ, which is vital for our times, a kind of not being embarrassed by that mm. in any way. Um, I think sometimes... Um, the church in some ways has lost its confidence in Ireland for all kinds of complicated reasons. Um, but there's something in the Dominican tradition that just is willing to, to preach Christ with, with, with utter confidence. Um, so for me as well, you know, just the whole idea of this long, long, long tradition, um, but also the freshness of the word of God, the yeah. word of God, which is ever ancient and ever new yeah. and always making things new. And so it's not like a stuffy existence that we have as friars. No, if no. the word of God is central to our lives, then it is ever new. And on all the encounters we have with people, you know, if the word of God is central, it's it's, it's always fresh. And um, so there's this deep tradition that grounds us, that kind of forms yeah. us and shapes us. But because the word of God is at the center of this ancient tradition, it's always new and always exciting. I, yeah, I mean, two things I want to say, and again, in relation to bringing up St. Thomas, what I've always found, and again, what was so appealing for me, how central Christ is yeah. to St. Thomas. Like St. Thomas mm. is often held up as, oh, that dry, like, theologian mm. guy who could never take a joke sure. uh, but that is not true you know sure. if you look mm. at his poetry look at his hymns yeah. he was like his writing is dripping with like piety essential piety true yeah, piety yeah. faith belief in Christ as absolutely central and also as Dominicans like we don't run around just like mm, St. Thomas is this and St. Thomas is that no. sometimes we do that <laughs> 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 no, but never. what we really should be doing right yeah. one of the best uh, ways that I have heard Dominican formation described is not learning what St. Thomas said so we can quote him as the answer, mm. mm-hmm. but actually learning to approach problems as he did, which speaks to what you're talking about there, the freshness of the gospel. Yeah. We're not antiquated. We're not fossilized. Yeah. If we learn St. Thomas's approach to problems, to look at them reasonably, yeah. to like to actually think through various objections and, and think through reasonably from premises to conclusions and using, yeah, using our minds, yeah. I mean, we, we can bring something that is, is very, very fresh to anything that the church faces in, in the modern day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. 
So I think we'll leave it there. Uh, I want to thank both of you for joining me on The World is Our Cloister. Uh, and also thank you to you, the listeners who have joined us and uh, stuck with us the whole time. Uh, thank you to Patrick Grant as well, our media manager, who is editing and doing all the kind of speed work in, the, in bringing this podcast to life, uh, whereas we take all the glory. That's how it works. So we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please look out for next month's episode when we'll have a closer look at religious life itself. Who are these guys walking about the streets of Dublin and many streets in many cities in Ireland who are dressed in white and black? So for more resources and content like this, uh, be sure to take out, check out the Irish Dominicans Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels. God love you. <laughs>